definitely at Medair, we are a humanitarian organization, so we're experts at delivering assistance to people in need, but we aren't necessarily experts at designing a shelter. And so for that, we needed to reach out to a partner, and we found them here at EPFL in uh, the Structural Exploration Lab. Medair has a lot of expertise in field, uh, something that we do not have. But on the other hand, we have a lot of expertise in structural design. So it's like, okay, let's put those two things together. Well, some of you <laughs> will go out to the community and you, you will train the trainers. Most curriculums now when look at uh, in the universities uh, really lack that content to do with the humanitarian architecture, things to do with displacement. Uh, but for us now here in the University of Dubai in the Department of Architecture, we are happy because it has become part of it as the project is being introduced. It provides a temporary shelter um, as we have built um, the first day that provides just immediate shelter for people. Then they can take those pieces and travel back to their homes when the flood subsides. And one of the first things that you need is uh, a shelter, a roof structure. Uh, a lot of those are damaged when they return. The plastic sheets will give them temporary covering until the grasses have time to grow and then they can thatch over this bamboo structure that we're making right now. We were in charge of designing this shelter from scratch, the conceptual design, the actual structural design. We had a strong collaboration with the team in South Sudan. The very first step was really understanding what's the situation over there, because for us it's a different reality that um, at the very beginning the, the main goal, the main goal was whatever solution we're going to come up with has to be something that works out there. The design of the current structure started from the viewpoint that we had to use as few pieces as possible, that those pieces had to be as interchangeable as possible. We take, take away the need of external support so the people can literally get the instructions, get the design, go to the market, and as long as they have the resources to buy it, because once again, it's going to be cheap, they can just do it, do it by themselves. Yeah. Uh, happy to see you again. And this is our second day, our second session. So it's very important because if they aren't involved in the process from the beginning, um, it's just not going to be successful at all. The way that this is being tied, it's using the materials they are used to, but in a slightly different way. And we'll be testing this out during this phase um, as we monitor how they actually do it. Is it what we think or is it different? Is it going to hold structurally? If it is, different is fine. If it makes it fall down, then we'll have to rethink how we do it. We did the border because it's still the old one that's too thick, but we have new ones. Rubber from all tires is really common to be used in different countries. It is because it's strong, it's resistant, it's flexible, it's uh, waterproofing. We had to push our boundaries to think, first of all, outside of the box and second, to work in an environment that we are not used to. It's a great experience and we do learn a technique, we have learned experience. I'm wishing other students and also to come and join us to learn the basic uh, aims of this uh, experience uh, to help uh, humanitarians and people who are in need. This experience has taught us a lot about how to do research that has real-world impact, impact uh, beyond the research boundaries, beyond 
the academic world, beyond the scientific world. For us this kind of project is very important because um, we can apply um, our results, academic results, to new contexts and that means finding a new relevance to the research that, that we do. And we want to now think outside of the shelter kit. How can we build greater resilience into the community itself? We want to scale up the distribution and adoption of the shelter kit across the entire country.